this. You got this. We're. Will you get a couple? Yeah. Oh wow! Oh, here. You reached. Hey. Okay. I'm gonna this try. Is my first low cut. Experience. I'm gonna try this low the cut. Yeah. That. Do you want me to hold it for you? These are the little. Ready? Little How sandwich. is it? Here's two. Yeah, it's actually really good. Mm. It tastes like an apricot. Mm. It does. Mmm. Holy crap. I, I don't know what that is. It's okay. Guys, it's not what is that? I don't know. Like I feel like an EDM videographer right now. Yo, 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 right? yo. Get the drop. <laughs> just just like drop. Gotta go in and out with it. Or just Um. Ooh. You got excited, I like that. Is it a food question? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have to Hello guys, Gina with Sidewalk Talk. Today I am with Cruella. Cruella. Oh, you guys really Cruella. synced that up. Cruella. Who are you guys? Yeah, we're just admiring all the homes. All the, the homes in this neighborhood. The land it is beautiful, mm. it is beautiful. Mm. Um, we're going to start off this Q&A with the question that we usually end our interviews with, mm. which is, what do you want to be remembered for? I literally remember that from our last sidewalk <laughs> talk. Not with you, but like the last Lauren, time we did side. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you? Yeah. I remember what I answered. You do? Wait, yeah. do you really? I'm gonna say the same thing. <laughs> Wait, Go, really? Tell yeah. Me. I, Dude, that was like four years ago. Well, it's the thing. I've thought about this question a lot on my own time, and so I just have a I have a thought for it already uh -huh. because it's something I think about on my own. Yeah. I don't really care if I'm remembered for anything. <laughs> That yes. was her answer. That was her answer. And you remember that? Yes. You she was, think about, because yeah. I think about it. It's like a, I already had the answer before you she asked that anyway, so I have the I answer this time. I need to fact check mine. I don't know what mine would be. <laughs> what I'm about to say is probably something I would have said back then because hmm. I'm a softie and I would say a loving family member. That's for Both being... of you approach this question like super like wholesome. You're like, you start, you're like, I feel so egotistical, even like consider it, you know? Like, wait, wait <laughs> you from said, my old one? Yeah, from you your did old... your research. Yeah, oh, right. you're like, oh, I feel so like egotistical, like answering this question. Like, I don't know how to answer it. Like, you want to be remembered for like whether it's the masses or, right, you know, right. you said that. And then you're just like, whether it's my dog, <laughs> you're like, oh, whether it's yeah. just my dog, like, it's just a positive impact. Stop the toys. Sorry. Oh my god. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Wait, toy. who's the, who's, oh, who's the toy? It's $22. They have prices on that. Oh, 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 are we oh, allowed? Oh, oh, toy. Toy. <laughs> it's just like, let me show the toys. <laughs> look, look, Very important toys. toys. I'm like oh. sipping a liquid death. It's not a beer. Oh, Take a look at the stained glass. So I'm just going to put it in my... The stained glass right there. Beautiful. Oh, I was like, where are you? Look? Favorite things about Chicago. Oh. 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 Architecture. Do you guys are... Oh. Sure. Yep. I love the bridges going mm. over the, the, oh, the river. Oh, my God. Wacker. Where did you guys grow up in uh, Chicago? We grew suburb. up in Northbrook. It's a suburb North like 20 mm. miles north of the city. How often did you go into the city? All the time. We would take the train. Yeah. The metro. We would take the, the metro. metro. How walkable the city is, too. Mm. Yeah. Yes. You know? And you can and take the, the trans L. public transportation yes. there is amazing. But what Favorite we food spots. Mm. Oh. Ooh. In Chicago. Oh. <laughs> we would eat Why did my mind go to Pita Inn? It's like a franchise yeah. thing. Pita, like a Mediterranean Pita franchise. Pita. Oh, well, the original ones, you know, like before it became a chain. Yes, I mean, please, please upsell I mean, the no, now food I'm, recommendation. Now I'm thinking of Tahura, which is like <gasps> the, the Pakistani Indian part. It's on Devon Avenue. And there's this restaurant that we've been going to since we were young children called the Huda that had crazy good chat, which is like this yogurt dish. Mm. And it's almost like a street food snack. A yogurt? And anything yogurt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like Syrian yeah. food? Yeah. Oh. oh. Yeah, you, yeah. Oh, there's the like this, oh yeah. my God, there's yeah. like a thing where you, it's like zucchini in Ooh. the yogurt and it's like stuffed zucchini. Oh. oh. Yum. Really oh my god. Good. Pizza's great. Also, Peace in Wicker Pizza. Park. But right next door, 
the pizza place, which I can't remember the name of, was also really good. They in were like, Wicker Park? Yeah, the, pi the pizza spot right next door. Oh. It, was, it was a buy the slice just, spot. Just, uh, did, 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 did you guys it? like deep dish? Are you guys? No. no. Right? Our mom's. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, our I mom's from um, Connecticut. So she likes East Coast style, New York style. Nor New crust. York? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Pete's Same. Pizza is, is Connecticut, New York style. Mm. So um, it's really Amaru good. is a Colombian spot Ooh. that I just discovered on Valentine's Day, and it was incredible. Mm. Plan if plantains I'm are on the hungry. menu, then. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> yeah. There was this place oh, in um, Logan Square called El Cid, and I wonder if it's still there. Their chimichangas mm. were the size mm. of a newborn baby, <laughs> and it they were so good. Oh. We're just now we're just talking about food. The mm. whole interview, I just food. <laughs> I don't mind that at me all. Me neither. Yeah. I could talk about food all me day. Too. Yeah. Me too. Me too. Next, the origin, the origin of the name Cruella. It was just a name that popped in my head back in the day, without any questioning. Really, like, that's it. That's that, it. That's it. it. And oh. I think it's 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 taken on a, a life of its own as the years have gone by. Mm. Like I think so one time it's like. Oh five, no, it's okay. Okay, okay. Sorry. It's, it's like connected. five years ago or so, someone was just like, it sounds like a female goddess. Or I guess goddesses. Do you do anything outside of EDM? Music wise? Music wise. Yes. Um, I definitely make like indie folk music with my boyfriend on the side, but it's not out. It's not, there's it's nothing. Good. So oh, good though. Maybe someday what? it'll be out. Aww. And then, uh, yeah, I guess just like weird random left songwriting stuff mm. that maybe will never be heard for the world but mm. yeah yeah mm. biggest challenge in songwriting second verse <laughs> the second verse, the second you know verse. that's an like easy challenge because if it was the, back in the day it used to be like the hook yes but fair yeah but the second verse. I, mean. I think I more said that because it's like a songwriter thing. Like you write the whole song except the second verse, and yeah. then you have to go back and write the second verse. And you're like, oh. How long does it usually take for you to complete a song? Usually, oh, it can take anywhere from like three, three, four weeks to like three, four years. Oh. <laughs> it's like oh. it completely that is quite the range. It oh, depends wow. on the song fully. Mm. It, yeah, look at the wisteria. Oh. Mm. Makes me think of Demon Slayer. I don't know if you watch it. I don't know. Demon Slayer? You don't like how this is the thing Demon? that protects the people from demons. <laughs> we're so we're, I'm sorry. I love we it. Can, we can get distracted real quick. I love it so much. Uh, Jahan, what do you think is the most difficult Which song oh. did you spend the longest creating? Well, I guess if you're including like when we started a demo of a song years ago, it'd probably be Drive Away, right? Yep, yeah, off our new album. Yeah. Drive, Drive Away. away. Oh, oh no, we, oh. the cactus guy, the succulent guy. Succulent you that, that's a really strong you know, so a plant. I put it to bed for a little, revisited for it for a again, long time. Put it to bed mm -hmm. again. So, um, yeah, four or so years. Almost no. four years wow. in the making, that song. While well, working on other things in between as well. That's and it crazy. went through so many versions, I can't even count at this point. How do you think you've grown as a person since you first started? Wow, you guys oh. first started. Yeah. First item for a minute. It's like 15 years ago. Yeah. Um, oh. I take better care of myself. Mm. That's good. I have facts, same. Yeah, I think, I feel like Johan and I, maybe not as, I, I should focus on us holistically as people, but specifically musicians are probably more genuinely being ourselves in the studio than ever before not overthinking as much mm. and, and you know what the other thing is is I feel like I find myself wanting to come back to certain things I lost when we first started mm. because what is that like what do you like when you like, first start you're yes there you are naive you you aren't jaded the world hasn't like crushed your soul yet. <laughs> you still have that childlike yeah. intent and excitement when you're mm. going into creating or even True. just living. Yeah. So I find myself wanting to come back to that oh, now more than ever. I, I mean, we are going out more, or we have been going out. We've, We've been have. more social. We've been the more past social lately. Months. Oh, that's awesome. Which I can't, can't say is the easiest thing because I can't introvert life, but uh, I can't. I can't leave to go to the movie theater. When it comes to creating music, do you have separate tasks? We, 
are like a mishmash of all of the things we both do. And I think we overlap in almost every single way. Mm. We, oh, we awesome. overlap in a lot of ways. Not with production. Yasmin's producing mm. and engineering but, all my vocals. But and yeah, beats. but Jahan's writ with me by my side. Like, and sometimes, sometimes I will be like, you know what, let me comp this without you in the room because I know exactly what the best takes are gonna be. And I feel like I'm saving Jahan from like going in her rabbit hole yeah. and overthinking. Wow. But for the, for the most part, we comp together. And production, we start all ideas together for the most part. Or we'll, we'll if I start something alone or if Jahan starts something alone, we pick up and do the majority of the creative work together. Mm. Um, but yeah, for the most part, everything passes, everything has to pass through our collective filter, mm. our, our like filter together. How do you approach songwriting? Like, do you do the, do you have something written out first and then you go with the melody or do you, you explain two different ways that it sometimes is <laughs> <laughs> it's both it's it's both. a lot of a lot of the times it's one or the other mm -hmm. but we have a system in the studio where we mostly follow if we haven't started any songwriting yet and is it's where we'll take like the beginnings of a production we're working on mm -hmm. and we'll just go in the vocal booth and gibberish out a bunch of melodies that are coming straight from the soul sometimes lyrics come out with that um and then we'll just chop them up we'll call it we call it frankensteining. frankensteining we chop them up we put melodies in different places we move things around we sometimes chop one phrase the front half with the back half of a different phrase and then we start writing lyrics to the the gibberish frankensteining that we've created that how often like do you guys work on music all the time. I mean, when we were finishing the album every day, Johanna and I are very like, we'll text in the morning, like, okay, so we're working today, let's say like 12, and then 11.30 rolls around, and I'm like, hey, I'm still eating, do you mind if we do one? And then 12.30 rolls around, and John's like, hey, I'm running a little late, is 1.30 okay? And we're just like, just yeah, go with well, the flow. whatever. Go like, with the flow. That we live I love down that. the street from each other. Yeah. Nobody's got to sit in traffic on the way to the other person's house. So yeah. it's pretty, we just go with the flow, yeah. Mm -hmm. I've realized that kind of like human beings, or like if you're in a relationship, I need time to, I like to, to create time to miss it. Mm. Like doing other things, or like we were kind of, we had a busy week and I was just, missing i had such a longing to play around on guitar which i just started teaching myself and to oh, just wow. write and and it that long that longing is the place that i love to create from mm. is where i'm like missing that sort of mm. experience with myself how difficult was the journey to learn music production um it's weird we're still on the journey the yeah. journey doesn't end and the journey mm -hmm. is sometimes really fluid and like all cylinders are firing and things are going really well and then sometimes your fucking session crashes for the 10th time that day or your plugins aren't opening or uh you can't write a melody to save your life and um so i think it just depends on the day it depends on the mood it depends on the computer's mood mm -hmm. if it feels like working well we just upgraded though. After seven years, we upgraded our computer. So hopefully that won't be an issue anymore. But oh. yeah, no, I think the, but I will say more than ever teaching yourself things. We were just talking about this. Mm. YouTube university, man. Like anything you want to know it's is on, on the internet. On Holy crap. I, know. <laughs> I don't know what that is. It's a guys, what is that? Before. I don't it know. It's like a fungi, but it's a, a succulent. It's, it's a I think it's a, it's, it's like a, a brain. cactus. Wait, I feel like... Is it a cactus? It's glorious. What is that, cactus. too? You know what I mean? That's is that a cactus. tree? That's a cactus. But it's yeah. dead at the... At yeah, it's the, dead at, at the, the root. Yeah. But it's still, but it's still gross. gross. Isn't that Guys, crazy? this is... That looks like we're on a different I feel, planet. Yeah, I literally feel like this like house... It's like old man. Where do, where, <laughs> it almost looks like it's mutant. Um, yeah, like, it's a mutant. It looks like it's one sort of cactus. And then other little pin cushions are growing out of it. Yo. Yo, what? That. You know the orc in Lord of the Rings that has like a brain like coming out? It's, it's like, yeah, it looks like that. It looks like 
Lord of the Rings. Oh yeah. Demon Slayer and Lord of the Rings. Like, we like Lord magic and fantasy and sci-fi. Yeah. But dark. Like we're, I, so, we're yeah. getting into Wheel of Time. Have you watched? Oh, I already that? watched it. Oh, yeah. Okay, so a show? I'm on like episode five. Okay. So I haven't stopped. Watching. I thought it was really bad in the beginning. Yeah. And then it got really good yeah. and then it ended and I'm like holy shit I can't wait for season two right so yeah it, I didn't love it in the beginning I thought it, it was, was worth sticking rating. through those. it got terrible ratings wait, like what? is it worth sticking through like, yeah okay. have you watched Carnival Row oh. no it's on Am or it's on Prime <gasps> so now we're just talking about show <laughs> recommendations <laughs> take notes guys uh Carnival Row is on Prime and it's like a murder mystery fantasy with a splash of like social commentary. Okay. It's really good. I'm it's really have good. To look into this. Once you finish Wheel of Time. Like I'm just thinking about the next episode. The end though. Yeah. The end though. The end though. Really? Ah! I gotta read the books because I feel like I want There's some 14 books. I know. I don't know if I'm ready for that. But <laughs> I do read a lot, but like really? going into a series where there's 14 already, 14 already I'm like, books, huh. yeah. it's where were we? Where were we? <laughs> production. Oh yes. Learning yeah, okay. music production. Yeah, YouTube yes. University. YouTube University. Uh, or honestly, we were talking about forums when you're troubleshooting. Mm -hmm. There's always some, someone on the internet who's been through it. God mm. bless those people. God just bless. Those, yeah. Yeah. Random people from around the world who just like want to share their knowledge. Yeah. What is the best piece of advice that you've learn like music production wise well this is not recently this was probably like two years ago but i was like really intent on flexing and using all these cool plugins and i was reading up on i can't remember what forum it was there was like um a forum about this new plugin that just dropped and this was two years ago so i actually can't remember which one it was someone wrote a comment they were like this plugin is really great but it's basically just um it's basically just mimicking something that this ableton stock plugin does and so learn how to use this one and you don't need to buy this one so it led me on a journey to just from re-familiarize myself with all of ableton stock plugins and i'm like damn don't don't uh what's the word it's on the tip of my tongue Hmm. Damn, I can't find the right word. But don't dismiss the fact that like the Ableton plugins, the free stock plugins, sometimes are exactly what you need. You don't need anything fancy. You don't need to spend money. Oh. Yeah. But obviously, I love I love some fancy plugins too mm -hmm. sometimes. But mm. yeah. So that's a, that's something that I would I would say go refamiliarize yourself with mm. stock plugins on whatever DAW you have because it's not just Ableton that has good stock plugins. And Jahan, you went to Pakistan recently, right? I did. How was it? Oh, I had the time of my life. I so went you, with our father. Yeah, so you yeah. guys started uh, like a women's health? A clinic, A yes. clinic. We like, started in the beginning of the pandemic with other family members. Wow. Um, and people who we had connected with online. So our mm. team has was, for the most part, we had never even met each other. It was just communicating over WhatsApp and Zoom. Coordinating every week, figuring out, um, figuring out how to hire doctors, our gynecologist, yeah. um, and we brought the village's first ultrasound machine. So we do mm. prenatal care, postnatal care, general health checkups for anyone from infants to people in their 70s come in. And it's all free. We give free medicine if what? there's treatment required. You guys are. That's amazing. Health has been you guys, really important to yeah. us, and like we. What made you want so, to start this? I think for me it was just wanting to be involved with the community in need long term mm. Mm. and um, sharing the resources that we've had access to mm. and utilizing our platform which has been amazing seeing the reach that we have to help yeah. fundraise and mm -hmm. also just network and see meet people who are willing yeah. to help out and give advice along the way like other people have started charities True cross yeah. here? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and I just feel really lucky that we've been able to like take care of ourselves and invest in health, which it shouldn't be. Like you shouldn't have to spend hundreds. Mm. Or you thousands shouldn't have of to dollars. sometimes go into debt over oh it. Oh my god! Exactly. I yeah. know. How do you manage to stay relevant in the scene? It's already so difficult, and you guys do such a great job <laughs> at it. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. We I love actually... the topic of relevancy. Yeah, we um. It's damn. so hard though. It is hard. There's so many producers. So There's many just artists. 
so many artists, a lot of so much music through. coming out. Yeah. Like every Thursday and Friday, there's like a hundred songs coming out. Yo, yeah, and I know. also at the same time, it's like social media trends are changing faster than anyone can even keep up with. Like, how do you keep it's up not... with it? Like, we, I we don't. don't. <laughs> we don't. We, we, <laughs> we do don't. our best. It's exhausting. I'm like, when I think about where I'd rather spend my energy, yeah. and, and also I have to say content creators and people who have truly learned how to use these platforms and create cool pieces of artwork and, or informative content on TikTok or Instagram, whatever, amazing, yeah. good work for them. But for me, I'm just like, I feel like- It's exhausting. It's, it's yeah. not- I feel like As we make a piece of content. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, yes. but, but this is the only thing that yes. I do, right? Yes. But for you guys, like, you guys gotta make music. You guys yeah. gotta make music. That's the part and you guys that gotta I make struggle music. with. Cause I'm yeah. like, I just wanna do the stuff that feeds my soul. Same. Yeah. Let it then take on a life of its own, mm. organically on its own. Yeah. No, I definitely struggle with being on socials, but relevancy is so much more than socials. It's like how you make people feel with your music, how you That's connect so with true. people. True. When you are on social media, are yeah. you using it wisely? Are you connecting with people? We're talking about like the feeling of fulfillment when you go to a show and fans sing your lyrics. Like yeah. to me, that's oh. much more, long, it's like a, a long-term sustainable happiness rather than like the dopamine hit or the boost you get from knowing a, a, a bunch piece of, of content likes. went viral. Yeah, or likes. yeah, yeah that feels that more relevant to me if someone knows the lyrics to our new album versus like something going viral, viral online, the post, mm. so. I yeah. love that. Who's your favorite producer to work with? Oh. Our favorites. Well, Prince Fox, who mixed our album. Mm. Yes. He's been an absolute joy to work with and has just been a, a We're a fan of him. We're fans of him. He's He was genuinely interested in our music, and I think that's how we want to work from now on is yeah. like people who are just stoked on what we're yeah. creating. He's mm. goals, too, because he wasn't a mixer. He was just like, he w when we first met him, he was he would call himself purely a producer, but he taught himself so much in the last like eight years wow. and now is mixing records and mixing is That's the one thing like so I don't want to do. It's That's just the, so hard. It, it's the um, bash your forehead against a wall kind of part of the process <laughs> and I don't want to mix at all. Jahan knows this, it's like the bane of my existence. Mm. And so having someone that you can trust that knows knows their shit that well like i just like sam prince fox is just a g he's so good he's so prince good fox. yes but okay so other producers so we haven't worked with that many producers we haven't collabed that much over time but the people we have worked with that have been amazing Kashmir, we had a collab with him but at 20, yeah, 21, 20, he's, 20, so pleasant to work with. he's so nice, so yeah. kind, and extremely talented. I think everybody uses um, shit from his spice packs more <laughs> yeah, than any other spice everyone, pack. Everyone, it's like the joke. It's like everyone's technically collabed with Cash. Yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. Everyone uses his uh, like his sound impacts yeah. are in like almost every single one of our yellow, songs. Yeah, I feel like we yeah. we'll always want to collaborate with them forever. Love the yellow like, claw guys. Yellow claw. With them. That I've girl, we just did a collab thing. with on our album. Um, oh. She's awesome. Yes. Mm. We have a lot of dream collabs. We were just talking about Soft is Hard recently. Like, I want to collab with her. She's <gasps> so good. Oh my god. Um, there's a lot of amazing people. We just finally uh, met more Kismet the other night, and mm. they are so talented and so young. It's kind of crazy how young they are, but yeah. um, would love to collab or just like continue listening to their music, you know, because. Mm. That's the, the beauty of the releases. But yeah, um, hopefully as we continue on our career, we'll keep working with amazing other producers and collaborators. Hmm. What is the biggest lesson you learned in the m music industry? Ooh. Get a lawyer. Oh, get, yeah. <laughs> get a lawyer. Get a lawyer. Get a lawyer. That is, that's very good Don't advice. sign anything until your lawyer tells yes, you. Yes, and take someone your... else said that too. <laughs> yeah, and that's a real serious yes. problem. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. get a lawyer. It's no very matter important. how antsy you read are. The you gotta, read the contracts. Read the contracts. Get the lawyer to read the contracts. Don't Please. sign until yes. the lawyer has. I think make if sure. you're also um, like dating, um, if you're looking at dating, meaning like looking for an agent or manager, take mm. your time. One of our friends from. Chicago fellow music industry um, colleague and, and one of our early supporters, Matt Devine from Kill Hannah. I think w when we were in the process of a few years ago transitioning management, he said, "Take your time. It's it's 
the amount of time you spend now meeting managers is inconsequential, you know, when you think about yeah. the next 10 years of your so life. So good. Yeah. Because I think, it, like, at least for us, I felt a sense of urgency. I was like, we need someone who can, like, continue or, like, help mm. figure out a game plan for us mm -hmm. and yeah. help put us on track with this music and figure out touring and the big picture plan. Mm. So we were kind of in limbo for a while, but I'm really glad that we continue to just search. That's search. very good advice. Yeah. Yep. What is your all-time favorite dessert? Oh, well, Ooh. we haven't tried it yet. Oh! But so, oh. <laughs> well, we are going to, too. Cheesecake bows? Yeah. Cheesecake bows. <laughs> We'll oh, report hopefully back. Hopefully, we'll see. We yeah, excited. I don't hype it up. Like, I'm I already good. No, I'm already guys. salivating. Oh, yeah. I hope you guys like no, it. I'm sold already. <laughs> I love bow and I love cheesecake. Oh, oh, oh. oh. we're just finding so many wow. little. Actually, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to. Okay, me, I love all me, me, me. like I lemon, tried. like a donut with lemon custard, oh, Boston cream jelly. Uh, oh. Yeah. Oh. Tiramisu. Yeah. Really big tiramisu, tiramisu fan. Mm. If you know what gulab jamun, mm. it's a Pakistani Indian like fried do donut but soaked in rose water syrup. Mm. I don't carrot know if I just when you make carrot cake. But carrot cake in general, wait, are we going on a dessert jam? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Yeah, big dessert mm. people, big sugar person <laughs> over here. Oh my god, a roly poly now. A roly poly. <laughs> oh, I love you guys. Mm. I I'm gonna not be able to be. Uh, there's a little roly poly. Oh, oh John made That's friend. So cute. So cute. It is. Hello. We should Hello. walk really slow. Reset. Really Reset. slow. I'm going to set the pace here. Yeah, set the pace. Grandma pace. Oh, describe each other in one word. <gasps> one? Just one. Sister. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, besides sister. <laughs> Wise. Why? No, I'm not. Oh. Whenever you call me wise, I'm like, that's so far. Would you rather be, I'll call you intelligent? I feel what like would you prefer? Neither. You pick. You can call me wise, but I just don't know if I believe in myself. I appreciate it. John, but other people experience your wisdom, John whether you realize is, it or not. John is, oh my God, you're so many. I'm thinking of like six million Let's get things. The cool angles. I want to say. Fierce. You're fierce. fierce. I feel like an EDM videographer right now. Yo, 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 right? yo. Get the drop. Get <laughs> just the like drop. Gotta go in and out with it. Or just a vlogger, I guess. Is this, this what vlogger? it feels like? Yeah. This yeah, this is what it feels like. Yeah, like. <laughs> Aw, fierce and wise. Fierce and wise. Damn, it's good, good combo. Mm -hmm. Piece of advice you'd give to your younger self. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Let's say baby relax, Azzle. baby girl. Aww. It's Relax. okay. It's okay. I just like give her a little pat on the back. Just, it's all right, baby girl. It's all right, baby girl. Um, listen to your intuition. Mm -hmm. Don't ignore the gut feeling. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they're all they're usually right as fuck. Mm -hmm. And also, this isn't worth stressing about. I'd say that. Yeah. Yeah. Focus on what's important. Think about I'm your family. I'm having that realization a lot. Yeah. Music, so that. Yeah. That relatable. Just like I, I would say, anything to like pull, zoom out, and pull, see, have myself yes. see the big picture. How often do you guys stay past, stay up past 3 a.m.? Never. <laughs> it's a very Only the show requires it. Literally. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot, Only, I forgot we yeah. play shows. Or, yeah. if, or if we have a flight that we have to stay up for, at, like if we're in Germany and we're flying to Austria the next sure. day, oh, like wow. we have to catch a flight. Wow, that's, that's goals right so there. So basically only if work requires. Yes, only if work absolutely. What, what time do you guys usually go to bed? In my ideal world? In your ideal world? I'd love world. to be in bed with a book by like 10. Same, 10. literally yeah. same. 10 mm -hmm. would be my ideal. Maybe 9.30 on a tired night. Mine's yeah. 8.30. I oh, love it. Oh, I, I like love yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, literally okay. go to bed. I see how you roll. Yeah. <laughs> I I really, you don't want to really leave like to go to the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Favorite country you've traveled to outside of Pakistan? <laughs> you Thank already you. knew. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw it in one of your interviews. Uh, oh, I love everywhere. We love god. Indonesia so much. Oh my god, much. I literally Indonesia. feel like I yeah. left a piece of my heart in Indonesia last Indonesia? time we were there. Yes. Yeah. What's your favorite thing in Indonesia? I've never really heard a lot of things. We went to that island. The, the colorful we city. Malang. What is it called? Malang. Was it Malang? Malang, yeah. Yeah, the Malang? I, it was an island. Yeah, there's another human with a doll. An experience. Oh, life. 
Yeah, and there were little little cats everywhere. Oh, the um, food was incredible. All the food. Yo. Tell me about the mm. food, though. If we're talking specifically about food, I feel like the place I want to go to is like Japan or Thailand because I can Japan. eat green curry or mm. sushi or sashimi, that kind of shit, all day, every day. Mm. I have no limits for it. <laughs> I can constantly consume, mm. constantly. Yeah. We also feel very connected to India. Yeah. Mm. I love, love India. I just want to travel again. Oh, I know. I yeah. just actually got back from a trip to Italy for my <gasps> 30th birthday. One of the most beautiful places I've ever been in my life. How's the pasta there? Oh, so good. <laughs> I never had bad pasta in Italy. There was no such thing. Mm -mm. You're oh. a foodie, I see it. I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Guys, I, yeah. You can't even hide it. Nah. I like, when it comes to food, there's just something in me mm -hmm. that just mm -hmm. is bored. Same, <laughs> yes. Same, same. I agree. Talk, I I'm not even like hungry right now, but I'm just salivating. Mm -hmm. I'm always thinking hungry. About. I'm always hungry. Oh, my! One of my friends just <laughs> sent me this video yesterday about the phrase in Japanese. I can't remember it, it, what it is when you're not hungry, but you just want to eat. Yeah. And the phrase directly translates to "my mouth is lonely." <gasps> <laughs> oh, and I really? can't remember how to say it. Dude, that's brilliant. But it's so oh. funny. My and mouth is lonely. My mouth is lonely. Oh my I'm god. Gonna, I'm gonna start saying that from now on. So oh my god. I'm hungry. I think what that really means my is mouth. I am lonely though. I'm no, I emotional think eating. My, right? Maybe, maybe a little, oh. maybe a little bit of both. Maybe, maybe a little bit of both. Oh, it's Just the, coming from single girl on a Friday oh. night, you know. <laughs> Food is the best yeah. medicine. <laughs> it, is, it is the best it medicine. Is. Where do you hope to be in five years or Ooh. ten years? At home. I struggle <laughs> with this. Right. At home on a Friday night. <laughs> Maybe by then I'll be in a theater. <laughs> Just like, like we're okay. so we're seeing, Oh, this we're dog. This dog likes there's, me. There's themes. <laughs> is that like a corgi? Is that a corgi? That's like so a corgi cute. Cute. But up girl. Those lemons are wild. Trust me, I've already oh. contemplated taking some. Have you looked at these lemons? I know. The size They're of so my pretty. head. This is for the little years. Do you mean like physically, like geographically speaking? Like it could be anything. Just in like a very open question. It could okay. be spiritually yes it could be physically so i would like deep. to have a better grip on stress or like my perception of stress because oh, a lot of it is mindset i'm mm. stealing that so definitely like yeah. the way i see the world and and things that feel like they're out of control i would like to have a better sense of managing mm. my emotions mm. around that so i guess that is a little more mm -hmm. uh less tangible yeah. to answer your question mm -hmm. and if the, in that case it's like you could be anywhere yeah yeah if the mindset is i don't really do yeah. long-term goals for myself you live like every day right like every I, yeah, yeah i live mm -hmm. like more like week to week if we're mm -hmm. talking about goals yeah. or month to month if i need to look that far ahead mm -hmm. but i change way too much to plan the next five mm. years to, i just do i i can't yeah I'm, that's good we know yeah. that about ourselves too <laughs> yeah. that's that's really good yeah i don't know maybe i'd like to like be starting a family then yeah. maybe i'll be auntie like, yeah right over here Aww. like i'd like to adopt someday i think about that so i think by then you know Five, five years from now. Yeah. Good. yeah. Or 30. I'm 32. 32. Yeah. I feel like when you are when you hit 30, like that's that's like when life starts. I feel I, like. I kind of get that. Right? I think you like can, that's like, when you like realized who you are and what yeah. you're comfortable with and you could just kind of go from mm. there. Be Larry, that. I don't What's the one thing most people don't know about you? Oh, damn. This one's hard. What do most people? A lot. It could be They're like a mystery. It could be like... <laughs> Like, I'm left-handed. No one knows that. I John left is left-handed. <laughs> oh, I am. Um, you are left-handed. But I think people do know that. Mm -hmm. You know what's crazy is, like, there's a lot of nuanced things that I would never think to say, but there is so, like... I'm sorry to the fans, but you'll never know Jahan like I know Jahan. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there's just so many nuances. Like, I do think that, like... One thing I can confirm that <laughs> um, 
online or like even in person I feel, I feel like people know you as like a troll you're just like trolling people that definitely seeps into Jahan's real life she's constantly like poking at people or trolling people in a real way it's not just for love trolling. It's not just for like the cruella sphere if i'm it's in the just mood her though. personality yes if, I'm yes. The, if she's yeah. in the mood she some she opens the windows and hollers out the window at people in the car yeah. when i'm ovulating Whoa. when i'm thirsty but, <laughs> no there's just so, that was such a vague answer but i'm like i'm trying to think it's so good it's a good answer I don't think a lot of people would know that. It is weird because we're talking about the person that I think either knows me best and or I <laughs> I know best. And it's like, what of the vast millions of things I know about her do other people not know? Oh my God, right. all of them. All, every single Everything. one of them. Yeah, because I feel like that, like, I feel like deep down you definitely got a softy in you and maybe that's not when i think about like the public perception of you or the the um the moments that people have seen of you and they've shaped their their view or their perception of you have maybe been more like tough or intense or like really i actually badass, think I'm, more, I'm a super softy with the crew so yeah, so yeah maybe <laughs> the ones who really 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 spent a lot of time with sure, us sure sure spent a lot of time with us online or, i'm like, so soft that they like, like they like make so much fun of me and I'm like their little, I'm their little like soft little punching bag well, in a great way. We're talking way. to it. like, okay, so I'm talking to the to people who have just watched our music videos because there are a lot of people who are like, oh, I thought you guys were going to be mean. Like we've met Aww. some people who are like, oh, we thought you guys were going to be or like, oh, going to be scary. In yeah, scary. But I'm she's like, really a sweetie softie. Yeah, but I'll still kick your ass. She will. Though. She will. She's <laughs> both. Whoa. She is both. <laughs> Um. Ooh. You got excited. I like that. Is it a food question? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have to reset. What is that? I just look a at low cut tree. It's L O Q A T. They're so. Uh, I don't know. L O Q, Q, Q U A T. Yeah. Look at this mint green building. So love cute. that. So cute. Yeah. Maybe we're we can running reach one. <laughs> Apparently. Wait. Oh no! It's too high. It looks. You can't get, can get it. Jump in. Oh wait. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, yeah, 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 we got this. Look at this. We got this. We're, we got a couple? Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, here. You reached Thank it. You. Whoa. Oh, yeah. What is it called? A low cut? Low cut. There's a big, there's a, a pit. Oh, wait, John, not that many. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you want them. Yeah. I, I love this. These, that one looks the most ready. These are ready. No, these you are think ready. So? Yeah. You want one? Do you have there's one? a pit in the center. Okay. I'm gonna this try. Is first low cut I'm gonna try this low okay, cut. Yeah. That Do you want me to hold it for you? These are the little pictures. Ready? How oh, is it? This is actually really good. <clears throat> it tastes like an apricot. Mm. It does. Mmm. Yeah. That's like. Mmm. That's so juicy. Mmm. Mm. Look how pretty the stone is. Mm -hmm. What the? Like you can make jewelry out of that. Okay. Now my hands are covered in loca juice. <laughs> You're like, damn, close <laughs> to this tree. Mmm. Will you hold these? Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We're going to plant a loca tree. Aww. One other? Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. What is, like, I've never had these. They're, they're all over LA. Are they native? Too. You'll just see them. Where we live, there's a bunch of trees. I'm so excited for them. I'm to not trying to figure out what this tastes like. I feel like I'm like a grape apricot, mm. a little bit in the texture, but then like it's kind of a little grapey, grapey. Mm -hmm. a little grapey. Mm. Mm. Oh, hi. Let mm. me hold it for you. You enjoy. I love this. Mm. I love this. Mm -hmm. Yep. What do you consider the ultimate comfort food? Oh, okay. All right, let's go. Green curry. Green curry. Wait, can we say multiple? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Green curry. Oh my god, what it costs me? Of course. Green yes. curry, extra spicy. Mm -hmm. Um, butter chicken. Extra with spicy. Parathas and naan. Butter chicken. Oh my god. Garlic naan. Yeah. Oh. I'm a big cacio mm. e pepe fan. Mm. Especially after going to Italy, I'm like, it might be my favorite pasta dish. Oh my god. 
Um, There's this place right on 3rd Street. It has the, in LA, best cacho. It's called Oste. Oh, we were just we there. Just there. <gasps> yeah, 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 yeah. Did you try it? We had yeah. the cacho buffet. It was, so it was really good. It was, it was so really good. good. It was yeah. super fucking good. And the pizza there is really good too. Yeah. <gasps> We just went there last what? week. What? Yeah, yes. it's like for the my first favorite. Time. That's my favorite, like Italian place. So good. In LA. Oh, so what's your? Is you that guys your are. Food? You guys are real. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. When we're talking about Pakistani Indian food. I love sog, like mm. the spinach with just like potatoes with a a, a heap of ghee on top. All but, done. What's love. like? What's like the dish that you go to like when you're like? The thing that you think about when you're like sick or like in a bad mood, like something that like your mom like always made. Oh. Bad mood for me is I want sugar. Sugar. Yeah. So mm. I'll feed the sugar soul because I'm a bit. I have a sugar problem, which is probably a bad thing, but it's mm. fine. Do it for the soul. I can really put down a couple of pints of ice cream <laughs> and some cereal. Some cereal. Cookies. Wow. Oh wow. Cereal. Oh. I think it's comfort yeah, food nostalgic. for people because people grew up eating it as breakfast. Yes, yeah. true. Like, yeah, now I, I when I wake up, I'm like, I like greens and eggs or oatmeal mm -hmm. or something. Something yeah. hearty, but cereal yeah, is I just like... I never eat cereal as breakfast. It's always like a late a night late snack. Night. Yeah. <gasps> a kitty! Yeah. A kitty! Oh, that was a really floofy it's one. A, yeah. yeah. It's big. Should we cross the street and, and try and get it? Yeah. <laughs> is this an interview or who it is? Just, I, just, I love this. For animals. I love this. Animals. Kitty. <gasps> but it's a oh, kitty. Oh. oh. You're watching something. And they're from. Hey, Hi. Oh my gosh, so Oh, fluffy. wait, its it's eyes so are kind of crossed and cute. Hi, can you come here? Hi. You're cute. Oh, you're so cute. Oh. No, you're either. Hi. <laughs> can I say hi? Yeah. <laughs> oh, crossed. my God. Do you see the cross? If you didn't do music, what would you have chosen as a career path? Oh my gosh. All right. I'll say one of my question. career paths mm. because you're going to love this. I wanted to work in food some way, shape, some way, shape or form. I had a dream of going to culinary school when I was in high school. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I love to cook as much as I love to eat. So that was one thing I wanted to do maybe, but you know. Never actually happened. You cook too? Oh yeah, we She's both were big cook. cooking, cook too. Oh. cooking and eating. I feel like I've wanted to do so many things in my life, like when I was a young, young kid. Mm. I always had a dream of being in music, but thought it was too much of a pipe dream. Mm. So I never took it seriously, but mm. yeah, I mean, besides food, cooking, culinary school, I had a, <laughs> this was another food related dream, but I felt like I really liked engineering, the thought of engineering, so maybe going to engineering school, wow. but then putting it towards like creating like a next generation line of kitchen appliances. <laughs> this is so specific. Whoa! This is so specific. Oh, but yeah, wow. But that would involve like the design That's and so the engineering cool. and the food world. And I'm like, that that was always a thought. Um, but John, what about you? Yeah. Um, after the past few years of rediscovering my love for creating visual art, I would probably do something in the visual art world, but I don't know exactly what it looks like. Because mm. when I think about visual art, I'm not really thinking about it in terms of a career. Yeah. I just want to make shit. You just you know? want to make stuff, yeah. Yeah. But I would love to, like my only, um, my only experience with like um, learning art formally was in high school. So I feel like what would lead me to the career would be going to like an actual proper art school. Mm. Um, yeah, I love working with mixed media. Mm. So yeah, I'd say something in the visual arts world oh. that involves like tangible hands-on illustration. That's awesome. You did like, you were like a makeup artist and stuff too, I right? was, when I, that was the side hustle. Wow. Yeah, but like, working in retailer sales was like, I struggled with that. Mm. Pressure, yeah, I kind of just want to create to create. I don't yeah. Do that. What, what other jobs did you guys have? Did you have other jobs while you were in the beginning? I was a server. I was a hostess at the place Jahan was a server. 
Really? That you guys was a like horrible work together? Server. <laughs> yeah, I sucked. I was one of those people who'd mess up orders all the time, couldn't remember people's orders, would get really frazzled if the place was packed, use the wrong credit card, you know, when you collect a credit card oh, if someone yeah. orders a drink. Oof. I'd use the wrong credit card to pay someone else's bill and then I got in trouble for it. I'll get drunk on the job. <laughs> Yeah, worst server oh, wow. in the world. <laughs> that would probably be me if I was in the food it's world. It's high pressure. I feel, I feel like it is it's high very food. undervalued yeah. people who very, work in service. Yeah. All kinds of service. Yes. Yes. You deal with shitty people all the time. Yes. Yep. Oh my yes. God. Whenever I go to the post office to ship things, Yo. just like the amount of disrespect. You worked at the post office? And, no, I, I oh. go to the post office, oh. but it's such a like, um, like especially for us hermits, you know, mm. we kind of forget what it's like. like we forget what people in a city are like. Yeah. You go to the fucking post office. That's when you see like the true colors of a city sometimes. Yeah. And like the disrespect for like these people who are hustling, especially in the pandemic. So. Most memorable fan moment. Mine is sad. Sad? The first thing that came to mind was um, it was a show, I think it was on our Get Wet tour in 2012. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, we were backstage. I think we were about to go on stage. Our mom was there with us because she lived in Chicago at the time, so mm. she was visiting. And there was a fan, there were like some fans backstage. I don't know how they got back there actually. <laughs> <laughs> and one of them, um, they were like, they came up to us and they're like, our best friend, I actually forgot his name. They're like, he used to listen to Alive every day going to the gym or maybe he was a football player or a swimmer I don't remember he was an athlete and he had committed suicide and they said that that's their um, that was his favorite song and it was his daily it was like his ritual to listen to that song and I started crying the oh second, my god like, the second they told me about that but they were all the, the joy that they were experiencing that moment for coming together as a friend yeah. group, group to honor him and celebrate him and come to our show that is the most was it was so sad but also at the same time once again like seeing like how they didn't that how they they wanted to remember him in a celebratory way and mm -hmm. by coming to our show i'm yeah. sorry about you. Oh, no, <laughs> yeah oh, no. that's and I wasn't crying at the time. I think that's why it sits with me still. Mm. Because like I didn't, I was like for years I'd stopped crying and yeah. that made me cry. Yeah. So I think that's why it's it's like imprinted in my memory. Cause yeah. I was like, why am I crying right now? I don't cry, I don't yeah. do that. Oh. Yeah, human struggle, mm. Yeah. We really do. Yeah. Mm. I feel like we've heard a lot of fan stories about struggle and it just per puts everything into perspective. Mm. It yeah. really does. And your your guys' music like helps them too, I you hope know? So I mean like literally that's the biggest honor someone yeah. could tell that's me amazing. as if our music helped them, but it's always almost mind blowing to think because I know what that feels like when yeah. so, an album has helped me get through a hard yeah. time and I'm like, We're creating music that helps people in the same way. It just feels yeah. crazy to me. Mm. How it's literal medicine in a moment. Like yes. I have songs that I have have like they are it is like a drug in a way where I'm like, okay, I'm in a certain mood or in a funk or I'm feeling mm. this sense of purposelessness or unworthiness or empty, whatever it is. And I know those songs I go to that literally like create, I can't even describe it. They like move me so much. Yeah, Which song? Like, like what song? I think so, so for what me, Reckoner, that's a big one, Radiohead, oh. that whenever mm. I put that on, it's like I'm like transported to a whole other world or it grounds me. Um, ecstasy ATV. It was my first intro to like trance. Have you? You need <laughs> no, to I've, to yeah, I haven't heard it. It was, or maybe yeah. I did. I when I was like 15 or 16, I'd heard it for the first mm. time. And it's it like feels like a rainbow explosion in my head. A lot of my go-to songs when I'm in like a really dark place or I need to make myself feel better are nostalgic songs from when I yeah. was a teenager. Mm. Um, all My Friends by LCD Sound System. Mm. It like immediately makes me feel like there's hope. Mm. I don't know why, like That's it's, it's like a really hopeful song. Mm. Um, even though it's like a bittersweet song, it still makes me feel something. Um, Tulips by Block Party, mm. Jihad, I know. Oh my God, it's so good. Mm. Um, man, like 
any incubus or death cab record or postal service like there are certain bands that just <gasps> take me i back haven't to my, heard like, postal service uh, in a minute say, i was a little wow. indie princess wow. man like i was all about it and like i haven't anything. heard that name in forever that that era of music was so special if you think yeah. about it that like our our love for electronica and like electronic 100 electronically produced music we uh postal reference service. postal service uh when making drive away Oh really? For, for the uh, the verses. Yeah, we were like, how can we make this more postal servicey? I remember us. <laughs> Favorite childhood memory. Oh. We would go to Houston every summer because our cousin, who's like our sister, we basically grew up. Jahan and I, our oldest sister and her, the four of us together. So every summer, either we would go to Houston where she grew up, or she would come to Chicago. And we would spend the summer together. And that Aww. was like the best part of my year was when the four of us were together. What? Botanic Gardens, we had some good good the memories Chicago there. Chicago Botanic Gardens? Only for like a field trip. Our family used to go there all the time. It was Aww. like our family thing to do. But we what? would let the parents, we would like run away from the parents and like all of us kids create our own little fantasy yeah, reality Yeah, that is games. so believe games. So yeah. cute. It was like a magical kingdom for it was. Mm. It was. Last question. Um, tell me about The Body Never Lies. It's our album that we dropped 10 days, ten ago. days ago. 10 days ago. Congrats. Thank you. Thank Congrats. You. It is um, definitely a culmination of not only the, the pandemic's work, but like also our entire career, I feel like we pulled so much inspiration from from the early Cruella days, from the mid Cruella days, from experiences that we've gone through over the last 10, 15 years. Mm. It's definitely, it was a journey to make because I think we dove into parts of ourselves that may, may have been dormant mm -hmm. or ignored. Mm. Or didn't even know how to express them or verbalize mm. them. Didn't have them words or, yeah. for that, exactly. Mm. So it was a really, really cathartic, probably the most um, most honest body of work we have up, up to this point in time because the next one's gonna be even more honest and so on and so forth. That's amazing. So. And, you've, and the title of it, it was from your journal? It was from, we were just writing lyrics to one of our songs and Yasin was like, that's the title. <laughs> she was like, that's it was an aha was moment just, for me. It was just a lyric. Mm. I think we were writing verses or something. Yeah. She was like, that's that's the title of the album. And we didn't know before that. We were like, we don't know what the title is. And we thought we'd have to like really reach for it. Mm -hmm. So it kind of happened organically, which is, and when we both kind of agreed upon that and felt like it was, it was, uh, a spark moment for us so we kind of run with it in those moments and don't question it too much that's amazing mm -hmm. well guys thank you so much thank you for doing this interview no. this was so much fun now i'm what? hungry now i'm oh, hungry yeah. now i'm gonna you know give you some cheese you're gonna go cuddle your dog yeah cuddle my ways. dog yeah. you never leave the next yeah. week <laughs> yes my introvert day yes. 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 yes but thank you guys for watching Bye. Thanks, Bye. 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 Aw, thank you for writing. Hell yeah. <laughs>